Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Starfleet Academy as we continue on with Cadet Forrester's scholastic career. So last time, uh, Magia is still having problems. I think she came up a little teeny tiny bit. Brady's down a little tiny bit, I think. So we gotta... Uh, we might have to help Brady some more. Corn's increasing though. I'm really proud of Corn. Um, I think after we had that heart to heart with him, he finally realized some of his potential and he's starting to develop that. So I'm very proud of him, but hopefully we can get our crew to shape up soon. I know McGee lost her family, but, um, we got to help her deal with that so she doesn't tank the rest of our scores. I feel bad for her, but it is what it is. Um... And if she's not taking time off, then she needs to perform, essentially. Um, yeah, and then Brady. Hopefully we'll get another chance to fix Brady up. But as far as the simulations go with the last mission, we uh, did a little science experiment and uh, made an alter ego of ourself that uh, wanted to kill Klingons, and we managed to stop him and recombine. Very reminiscent to an extent of the uh, original series episode, The Enemy Within, when Kirk gets split in a transporter accident and then you have good Kirk, bad Kirk. Um, so I guess let's continue. For several years, we've been receiving subspace distress calls from the HIA system just outside of Gorn space. These signals seem to come from every known race in the quadrant as well as several races we've never heard from before. We have tried answering these beacons, but have received no reply. Go to the HIA system and determine the source of these signals and hopefully stop them by solving any problems. Captain's log, Stardate 3262.4. We're en route to the HIA system to investigate a strange set of subspace distress calls. We don't know why so many different races would be in distress in a single system. But I guess that's what we'll find out. Course laid in, Captain. All right, let's uh, see if we've got any information on the HIA system. That is a big no. Ah, nothing else to do than warp, I guess. We're being hailed by everyone. All of the known space traveling races in this quadrant. And a few I've never heard of before. How many ships are there, Mr. Stirk? None, sir. The messages appear to originate from HIA 5. Return the hails, Magia. They don't seem to be responding. Wait. They've changed. There are several sources now. One of them is repeating our hail. Captain, this phenomenon may be a type of subspace resonance capturing and repeating all subspace messages broadcast within the system. If that's what it is, then it's coming from the moons of that gas giant. All the messages are originating from there. There's no response, Captain. I'm right. now scanning for life forms known to be capable of surviving in these conditions. I have found the source of the broadcast, Captain. There are approximately 40 silicon-based life forms within the ring segments indicated by Ensign Magia. The messages just changed, Captain. Mostly random exclamations. I think they're reacting to Mr. Sturrock's probes. That would indicate these beings are capable of detecting and emitting subspace frequencies. There's no response, Captain. Captain, a Gorn ship is approaching from the other side of the sun. Perhaps its captain can answer some of our questions. Sturrock, scan the there organisms. unusual to report, Captain. There's Hailed no up. response, Captain. All right. Hail the Gorn ship, then. Let's get some answers. Hailing channel open, Captain. This is Captain Sushin of the Gorn Harvester Ship Sweet Song. Why is a human starship in this system? I am Captain David Forrester of the United Federation of Planets. We are responding to a number of subspace distress calls that are coming from this system. There are no other ships in this space but yours and mine. Ah, you must be referring to the Mimics. What are the Mimics? A space-dwelling life form. They generate their own warp phenomenon and travel between the stars. 
More important, they receive subspace transmissions and repeat them. This makes them a prized commodity on the Gorn homeworld. They can be quite entertaining. In what way are they entertaining, Captain? When given the right subspace inducement, those creatures sing along the subspace bands. We then take the sound into an audible band that is delightful to listen to. Now, I must harvest some mimics for the next concert. They do not fare well in captivity, and must be constantly replaced. Thank you for the information, Captain Sushin. Now please leave the system while we continue to study these mimics. I assure you they will not be harmed. Sturrock, have these mimics shown up anywhere else in known space? Corrin, is there any change in the status of the Gorn ship? Sturrock, what kind of vessel are we dealing with here? Sturrock, what is your estimate of the intelligence level of these mimics? Captain, the fact that these mimics use distress calls when the Gorn ship approaches indicates that they have a modicum of intelligence. They seem to be aware that the appearance of the Gorn Harvester presents a danger to them. Hail the Gorn ship again. Hailing frequency open, Captain. I really don't like the sound of this. It sounds like they take them, torture them so they make these sounds, and then they eventually die from that torture. Captain, I must ask you to cease- Captain, if you take that ship anywhere near those mimics, I'll blow you out of the system. Thank you for your explanation of the situation, Captain. We'll leave you to go about your business. Captain, I must ask you to cease your activities. These mimics are in danger from your actions. Captain David Forrester, this interference in Gorn traditions will not be taken lightly. Leave this system now, before I am forced to call on the Royal Gorn Navy. Very good, very good, Captain Sushin. We'll leave now, but we will make a full report to the Federation. I assure you, Captain, that we will defend the Mimics from your actions. I'm not taking any more of this, Sushin. Mr. Korn, red alert. I must ask you to leave the system now, Captain. Please, do not make me enforce my request. Very well, Captain. I will return to Gorn space. But I will send the Gorn Navy to deal with you. The Gorn vessel is leaving the system, sir. All right. Captain, we may be able to save the mimics by taking them from the system. Sturrock, I want you to come up with a method of luring the Mimics away from this area. While that's happening, we can orbit here. Sturrock, I- Magia, update Starfleet about our situation. While that's happening, we can orbit here 5 to stay hidden. Alright, yellow alert. Disable, uh, the tractor beam. Sturrock- Captain, there is a ship entering the system. It seems to be a Gorn military vessel. Magia, hail the Gorn. Vessel. This is Captain Zeshar of the Gorn Naval Destroyer Long Flame. State your business in our space. Didn't know it was your space, thought this we was are open going space. to make sure your people cease killing the mimics. Cap we are here to defend the mimics that your people have been driving to near extinction. Turn your ship around and get out of the system or we will open fire. Captain Zashar, we are here to defend the Mimics from possible genocide by your people. We do not intend to leave the system without assurances from your government that they are safe. I am here to protect the Mimics from the Harvesters. Perhaps you've seen some human. I assure you that no true Gorn would kill these magnificent wonders. I am glad to hear it. You, I am not impressed by your patrolling, Captain. You let butchers like Captain Sushin harvest these creatures while you choose to look the other way. What's the matter, Zashar? Trying to weasel out of a fight because you know a Federation science vessel can tear you apart? Red alert! I am not... I am glad to hear it. You ought to look out for a ship called the Sweet Song. If we had not been here, 
He would have harvested mimics without you being aware of the fact. Our patrols in this area are limited. Many are unwilling to give up the pleasure of listening to the mimics. But perhaps we could come to an agreement between the Gorn and the humans to patrol this region together. That sounds like an excellent idea, Captain. I shall notify the Federation and Starfleet. Perhaps something can be arranged. Captain, something is warping into the system. What is it? They're powering up their shields and weapons. Captain, Red alert. all of the messages have changed into distress calls. Life support at 50%. Uh, all right. We're doing this. No time for power allocation, unfortunately. Looks like they, uh... Ooh, we're almost through his rear shields. There we go. Uh, Alright, let's take care of this other ship now. Alright. Get out of there. I'm receiving a message from Starfleet. We're to return to Starbase immediately. Course laid in, Captain. Ooh. Thanks for the long flame. But I think we could have taken them both. But um there is nothing unusual to report, Captain. Well, uh, let's see how close we can get to these mimics. Oh. Ah. Uh, <laughs> they do not look as impressive. Stand down the yellow alert. They do not look as impressive as I thought they would. Let's uh get a little bit of separation here. I don't want them to crash into us. Uh Oh, they're just sitting here. Okay. Port side shields repaired. Oh, they're kind of cute in their own polygonal way. Or polygonal, I guess, might be the better way to say that. Uh, let's maximize repairs to the shields and life support. Upper shields repaired. And the hull. Tractor beam is low priority for now. Let's see. Oh, we'll have to let Starfleet know about these. Unfortunately, I think because we chose to update Starfleet, uh, we can't... Um, Life support system online. I don't think we can come up with that thing to move the mimics, but if I guess if we're going to patrol this area better, that gives us time to come up with a method... Um, and I wanted to know what Starfleet, uh, let Starfleet know what was going on in case he really did call the Gorn Navy and there was a diplomatic incident. Uh, where are we at? Okay, Hall's pretty good now. Probably reset our allocations. I think tractor beam and shields are the big ones at this point that need attention. Uh... Uh, Miss Acton, if you would please warp us back to Starbase. And actually something we can do before we end the mission. Gorn, a race of reptilian humanoids that occupy several star systems in the Metron set sector. Initial contact was hostile until stardate 3045.6 when intercession by the Metron created a diplomatic initiative between a Gorn ship captain and Captain James C. Kirk. Phases are online again, ready to fire on your orders. Since that contact, relations have been tense, but peaceful. Metron Sector. Sector named after a highly advanced life form that is assumed to live within its boundaries. It lives between the spheres of influence of the Federation and the Gorn Star Kingdom. 
And uh, let's see if we have any data on the mimics. Nope. Uh, what about the long flame? Nope. What about the sweet so No. Nope. <laughs> okay. Oh, Swift Talon. Uh, the Swift Talon is one of the newest class of Gorn cruisers created to be able to match a Constitution class starship. Swift Talon itself has been seen several times in Federation space, usually as part of a joint exercise with Starfleet forces. Ship's captain, Zashar, has proven to be quite friendly to Federation interests that match those of the Gorn Star Kingdom. Okay, so that's the one that helped us. Um... I don't think... We have information on those other, um, we don't have information on Zashar. Um, yeah. I really wish this would link, uh, up. Oh. Sunrider? No, Federation Freighter. Yeah, and this doesn't link, because there's actually two classes of ships in here. I believe it's the Gorn Light Cruiser and the Gorn Transport, I want to say? Obviously, the Sweet Song was a transport. That ship that came in was probably... Um, I don't know if it's the military vessel or the transport. I didn't get a look. And then, obviously, the... Um, the Zashar... The Zashar ship, the Swift Talon, is a light cruiser. But since we're in friendly space... Stand down, all stations, green alert. Megia, hail Starbase. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. By chasing off the Harvester and negotiating with the Gorn naval vessel, you showed both decisiveness and diplomacy. You have solved the mission in the best possible way. Congratulations. Excellent, cadet. Your score and performance on this scenario were well above average. All right. So we did really well on that scenario. So we'll save that. What's our crew doing unchanged? Well, now let's dig into their personal affairs a bit, <laughs> as we do. I'm still getting some distortion. Try the next processor. Yes, Commander. Good morning, Commander. Greetings, Captain. Still trying to get that thing to work. Ah. Watch the specs on the new Klingon heavy cruiser. Why don't you plug it in, see how she flies? Right away, sir. Cadet. Captain, this is Cadet David <clears throat> Forrester. Glad to meet you, Cadet. It's an... It's an honor, sir. About last night... Kid looks nervous. Goodbye, sir. David. Is there a problem? Well, it's my crew, sir. It's a lot harder to manage them than it looked on paper. Sometimes Starfleet gives the most challenging cadets to the most capable command school students. Bringing out the best in them brings out the best in you. It's an old Russian technique. David, what is the problem? It's my communications officer, sir. She has a personal problem that has her ready to blow up. But she suppresses it. It's bringing down her work in the simulator. Before I joined the Enterprise, I had the commanding officer on Bendiri 4. She had a very hot temper. But she thought getting angry was unprofessional, so she would hold it all in. Whenever she did this, we knew we were in for serious trouble. If you want to help your communications officer, you must encourage her to express her emotions in a more appropriate place, outside of the simulator. How do I do that? That's for you to figure out. 
But if you've made it to Starfleet Command School, you've probably made somebody angry before. Try to do it again. Thank you, sir. Carry on, Mr. Forrester. We've got to get that Klingon ship simulation running by this afternoon. And keep your nose out of the ship performance specs. Yes, sir. Sir, does that mean that... Never mind what it means. Aye, sir. Ooh, well, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> I guess we know what our next mission's gonna be. Uh, but at least now, Forrester finally has a clue of what to do with Magia. And that basically sets up our next mission. Uh... Yeah, Brady's not improving. Uh, their score's kind of held steady. Hopefully, um... Hopefully we can help McGee out then in our next interaction with her, which I imagine will be next time. And hopefully by helping her, Brady will finally get his scores up since he'll be more ready to interact with the team. Honestly, I thought we fixed him, so... So, uh, and he has been interacting a bit more, like he was going to help Jenna with those, um, those warp field equations or whatever, uh, the last time we were with our crew, so hopefully we can start getting his scores back up, because I would really like some more efficient damage control and energy allocation, but until then, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for next time, and stay safe out there, and we'll see you then.